right on cue, Dianne Feinstein introduced her assault weapons ban of 2013 into the Senate. Now, the House has promised, or the Speaker of the House has promised, that they will not consider an assault weapons ban until the Senate acts. If the Senate passes the assault weapons ban, they will then con consider it or vote on it in the House. I originally made a video that talked about some of the proposed properties of the assault weapons ban bill that Dianne Feinstein was going to introduce, and she has removed some of those components that were originally thought that would be included. Now, that makes this bill even that much more dangerous because it makes it more likely to pass. Some of those properties that were removed were things such as the NFA registration piece. That would have required you to register anything defined as an assault weapon as an NFA item, similar to the process that you would have to go through to register a machine gun, a short-barreled rifle, a suppressor, or firearms of that type. She also removed the inability to transfer a grandfathered firearm. In essence, you will now, under this bill, be able to transfer or sell a grandfathered firearm to another party. The only difference is, is that you will have to take that firearm to a licensed FFL dealer. They would have to take it into inventory, and then they would then transfer it after doing a background check to the new buyer. But like I said, this doesn't fix the problems with the bill, and it does, however, make it more dangerous because, again, it makes it more likely to pass. Let's talk about some of the properties of this new bill. The 2013 bill is very similar to the 1994 bill. However, it is more restrictive. Let's talk about rifles first. Any rifle that has a detachable magazine and any one of these following features will be defined as an assault weapon under this new bill. First of all, a pistol grip. Now, Diane Feinstein and her crew hate pistol grips. She's under the false impression that pistol grips make the weapon fire easily from the hip to spray targets, that she thinks that the military purposely designed these firearms with a pistol grip for that purpose. If she had ever spent a day in the military, she would realize the military doesn't teach, at least the U.S. military, doesn't teach you to fire wildly from the hip. Regardless, a pistol grip doesn't make it any easier to do this. A standard wrist stock on a rifle can be fired just as easily from the hip. So I don't know why she hates the pistol grip so much. It's just a cosmetic feature. It does make the rifle slightly more ergonomic. It's just a modern feature, but she hates them, and it is a feature of an assault weapon. A second pistol grip is twice as bad as just one, so any firearm that has two pistol grips would thus, thus be banned under this new law. A folding, telescoping, or a telescoping or removable detachable stock is also one of those evil features coupled with a detachable magazine makes it an assault rifle. So your M4 style stock that you can adjust for length of pull or any uh, stock that would fold to the side or even be detached. Now it doesn't clarify what detach means. Pretty much any stock can be detached so it doesn't say how hard it must be to be removed like have to remove a screw or something. It just says that if it's detachable it's banned. And then, of course, the grenade launcher and rocket launchers. Thank God somebody finally banned these things because they have been tearing up our schools and public buildings and things like that. We've had endless attacks with rocket launchers and grenade launchers in America, and finally they've banned them. Oh, wait. They were already banned. You couldn't buy them, and no rifle I'm aware of anywhere in the world allows you to fire a rocket from a rifle. But, hey, just in case, you can't have a rocket launcher on your rifle. It makes it illegal. And then a barrel shroud, a cosmetic device that goes around the barrel. It looks evil, therefore it must be evil. It serves absolutely no purpose, but hey, you can't have that on your gun either. And then, of course, you have that threaded barrel. Those evil threaded barrels allow for the attachment of things like sound suppressors that are safety devices that keep you from going deaf. But if you have a detachable magazine and a threaded barrel, it's a no-no and therefore banned under this new law. The bill also includes a ban on magazines over 10 rounds of capacity. Any magazine owned before the effective date of the ban will be grandfathered and you can still keep it. You can even transfer it, at least that's the way I read the bill. It will only ban the manufacture of new magazines after the effective date. So there will be no new magazines. Any magazine that holds over 10 rounds that is manufactured after the effective date will have to be serialized and also stamped for the date of manufacture. Semi-automatic magazine-fed handguns are treated just like semi-automatic magazine-fed rifles underneath this new law. If the handgun has any one of the following characteristics, along with being magazine-fed, it will be classified as an assault weapon, and some of these are particularly alarming. First of all, a threaded barrel. If you put a threaded barrel on a handgun after this law goes into effect, you would be manufacturing an illegal assault weapon. That means you can't put a suppressor on a semi-automatic handgun. You can't really suppress revolvers effectively, but this would kill the suppressor handgun market out there. Next, a second pistol grip. Now, this is just more evidence that Dianne Feinstein doesn't even understand the laws already on the books. You can't put a vertical foreign grip or a forward hand grip on a handgun legally under existing NFA laws without registering that firearm 
on the NFA, paying a tax, doing fingerprints, getting a background check done, having local law enforcement sign off on it. So she really doesn't even understand the existing laws. So that really has no effect. Now a barrel shroud is also included. So if you put a barrel shroud on a handgun, which is a cosmetic feature, it would be classified as an assault weapon. If the handgun has the ability to accept a magazine outside of the pistol grip, something like a Tech 9 handgun, that would be classified as an assault weapon underneath this ban. Now here's the other very alarming property of this, this new proposed law. If a semi-automatic handgun is a semi-automatic version of a fully automatic handgun or a machine pistol, then it would be classified as an assault weapon underneath this law. The Glock 18 is a machine pistol. The Glock 17 is a semi-automatic version of that Glock 18. So if we take this law literally, Glocks would become illegal because they are semi-automatic versions of a machine pistol. The same thing is true of the Beretta 92. The 93R is a select fire machine pistol and the Beretta 92 is a semi-automatic version of that. So if we take this law literally, again, the Beretta 92 series of pistols would be considered assault weapons. Even the 1911 has a fully automatic counterpart. It's obscure, but it does exist. So in theory, underneath this law, it would also become an illegal assault weapon. So let's talk about shotguns. What shotguns would be affected by this law? Well, again, it's a bit alarming. Any shotgun that has a magazine, fixed magazine, that can accept over five rounds and a semi-automatic would be considered an assault weapon. Tubular magazines that accept over five rounds. Any semi-automatic shotgun that has a detachable magazine of any size would be considered an assault weapon. Of course, folding stocks and pistol grips are included as well as well as rocket launchers and grenade launchers. I mean, how many shotguns are out there with grenade launchers and rocket launchers? As I've mentioned before, this law is going to do absolutely nothing to reduce violent crime or to save our children in schools. That's not even the goal of this law, as she admits in her press conference. We have tried to recognize the right of a citizen to legally uh, possess a weapon. No weapon is taken from anyone. The purpose is to dry up the supply of these weapons over time. All she's trying to do is push her agenda forward to ban firearms completely at some point. This is just one of those baby steps that she thinks she can get away with because she thinks the time is right because of the recent shooting at Sandy Hook that she can push this through because emotions are high. We have to prove to her that she is wrong. We are going to fight for our Second Amendment rights. We're not going to let them impose arbitrary bans on firearms that are rarely used in crime. Less than 1% of the firearms used in, in crime are of the assault type. And we're not going to let them encroach on our abilities to defend ourselves or our family or to protect our country from tyranny. Her attempts are unconstitutional, as I outlined in other videos I've talked about. So it's time for us to act to stop these laws. We need to write our congressmen and our senators, and I'll put links down below that will help you do that. If you guys have any questions, you can also swing by our Facebook page and ask those questions. But I ask each and every one of you, if you own a firearm, if you're out there going to the gun store right now trying to buy an AR-15, that's great. But come home and write letters. It's now time to fight for our rights. And also, be sure to attend the February 8th rally in your local state capitol. Thanks for watching, everybody.